guess what time it is folks it's Waco Wednesday and I finished all my duties in Waco so I'm gonna go up to Fort Parker and fish Spring Lake I think it's called Spring Lake or Springfield Lake go through the land of the windmills look how green it is they got some rain up here that we haven't got everything green and they're they're gonna take those bales off and get another cutting that spring lake is a neat lake I'm just curious to see what the weeds have done they should be dying back it's that time of year where they die back and that's a spring fed lake so it shouldn't have O2 problems you know oxygen depletion it shouldn't have that because it's the entire mass of the lake moves out and it's constantly moving and I, it may still have problems I don't know but it's kind of warm today it's probably in the mid 90s but it'll cool off relatively quick and I'll see what the fish are doing I got a new froggy fly to throw at them I did a little testing yesterday in the pond I caught two fish missed two others that's with my dogs swimming and carrying on and making a bunch of noise so it's not a good test plus those fish have seen everything I've ever tossed uh, and they're just not very easy to fool until after dark that's that's when the froggy fly really starts working is that you know 30 minutes before dark in the twilight of the night or the morning uh, I don't get out in the morning too often but uh, I do get down there in the afternoon I've been running my dogs quite often. It looks like the land of the windmills. Most of them are turning. There's not much wind today. We have arrived. Nice about that. It's only about 50 minutes from where I work in Waco. Got well, my cow cows. Wear those today. Man, that would have been some really good boots. Those have been some really good boots. I really do appreciate these things. There's a fisherman in front of me. Hooked for life. Fish on catfish. Yeah, baby. Nice little town of Grossbeck, Texas. And look how green it is. I think they've gotten quite a bit more rain than what we have. That's ridiculously green. Especially compared to what we have at home. Man, we're brown, dead, crispy, crispy, fried, crispy fields. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. We got registered in for the day. Just for an evening. I buy the uh, park pass for all the state parks so I can come in here anytime I feel like it. Gives you all kind of privileges basically it lets them know who you are and when you're coming in and when you're going and keep track of it without having to do a whole lot of paperwork at the time you're doing it all right let's grab them boots and hit the trail I'll tell you what i've had these boots for three months now i think something about like that i got them right at the beginning of the drought which these boots are more about being warm and dry than they are about uh uh, keeping you cool which has been a problem in the summertime, but it's always a problem no matter what you wear But these have been some good boots. Hell I wear them almost every day. This rig put together. Let me show you my my latest frog fly This thing is a work of art I was real surprised that the fish didn't seem to Care for it in my pond that much. I worked quite hard to get four fish to even take a look at it Two of them got it in their mouth when I was leaving for the day, you know, I cast it way out there and I started reeling it in. And of course, I catch a fish reeling it in. So it was moving and having it sit still didn't seem to work, but moving did. Folks, here we go. Nice Boy, these boots are comfortable. Nice big toe box, you know. I bought them at a half size bigger. I wear a 10 and a half. I bought these at 11. Uh, size 11 because you know you got to have room for my feet to swell because they do and especially in the hot weather 
but in the cool weather an extra pair of socks will add to my insulation to keep my feet warm which is not a big deal here in Texas because it never gets cold it never gets that cold but you never know I might go up to Michigan again at some point I'd love to go to our old deer camp even though it's not ours anymore we do know people up there I'm sure Seavers would love to have us up there I'd love to have all my brothers go up there at the same time. Actually, I'm all my family. Boy, we had a good time in Michigan. Always, 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 always. Deer camp was a very special time. It's just hard to beat that. Now, it's all a memory, but they're good memories. It doesn't feel bad at all. I mean, it's, it's warm, but it's not blasted hot. That air has a soft feel to it. This is a unique place. That lake looks like it's in good shape. I've never fished the lake part of it. At least not the big part. I usually drop in at the river at the boat ramp way up above the lake and fish the upper part of the lake, especially in the spring because I got white bass in here. Not very many big ones, but they got them. I've only found them, what, once. But they also got black bass. And this, this is one of those waters, one of those lakes that has some really big bass in it. The lake, for the most part, is quite shallow. It used to be covered in lily pads, so I gotta go take a look at the other part of the park. See if the lily pads are still there, because boy, that'd be fun with a frog fly, wouldn't it? Especially if you gear up, put a heavy stuff on, and put a big frog fly on it. Especially one that's weedless and you can hop over lily pads. That'll be a blast. I mean, they got bowfin up here. They got gar, catfish, all the carps, and bass. They got spotted bass and largemouth bass. Probably not so many spotted bass. I'm not sure I've caught a spotted bass up here. I do catch them at the ranch further down. This is probably 60 miles, maybe more from the ranch. Same river, just way down there. Boy, there's a lot of activity on the surface of that water. Bet that's, oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> well. Ah, uh, that's duckweed. Wow. Well, I'm glad I came up here. So I know not to come up here again <laughs> until this stuff dies back. Wow. All right, I got some open water up here, so we'll go hit it. Wow. That is a mess. Ah, but they mowed a trail for me. All right, well, we'll, we'll fish the clear spots and see what we can raise. Nice thing about duckweed is it's not particularly difficult to fish. It's just a thin layer of that crap on top. Wow. Ooh. That water is clear. Beautiful. Well, shoot, let's get started. Let's see what they think of my little frog fly. I bet they like it. There you go, get that thing out there. I got about five foot of furled leader and about two feet of doubled up six pound test mono to the end of this fly. And in this particular kind of water, it's probably a good thing to have a little heavier gear. That whole mass is moving this way. All right, I'm getting, seeing a lot of movement in the water. That's probably it. Ooh, there he comes, there he comes. Look at him, look at him. Ooh, he got it. <laughs> that didn't take long. What a whopper. 
Look at that. This is this is a good challenge here because you got to be able to hit those little clear spots, and that 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 uh, duckweed will not stick to my fly. So I'm going to pull it right in there. That little fish came out from underneath that stuff. Came screaming to look at my fly. I stopped for a second and then decided, yep, that's something to eat. And I'll bet you a cast along the... Oh, oh, oh yeah, watch this. Watch this. Here it comes. Oh, they, oh, we hit it. That looked like a little teeny tiny sunfish. Oh, yeah. Good choice for today. Good choice. And there are some big big bass in here i've seen them every time i come down here i see these big fish i just never hang into one of them oh i just saw i just saw something big Ooh, look at that frog <laughs> there's a frog running for his life that's a good sign that i might be using the right fly fish, i bet you getting in those weeds oh did i lose him i think i lost him he left me with nothing but weeds. I have no idea what it was. It didn't feel very big, so it felt more like, much like a uh, sunfish, which it probably was. Once again, a good reason to have strong, strong, strong line. These fish, these fish ain't gonna give a dang about seeing that line. So that means you can go strong on it. No worse for wear. That was a big pile. A big pile of stuff. But I can replicate that all the way down here. Ready? You just drop it right on that edge. Closer you get to the edge. Oh, there he is. <laughs> all right, let's swim him around a little bit, see if he doesn't get some attention from a big bass. <laughs> Whee! He should fall off of there. It's a barbless hook. And it is very likely that this little old fish will get some attention of a big bat. Oh, he came off. Good for him. He didn't have to sacrifice his life for me. Oh, here he comes. I can see him coming out off the shoreline. This is really not a bad situation. I got good clearance behind me, especially for working short distance. And I can do this all the way down. I'll skip through and get out on that peninsula. That's where the springs come out, right off that peninsula. Wow, something really took a whack at it. Didn't get it though. There's a little bigger fish, I think. Come on, fishy, fishy. Oh, 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 oh. Something messing with it. This is gonna be fun. But there's something messing with it on almost every cast. I think most of it's small sunfish. But look at that. Look at the view. See it pick it up. Whatever it is, good size. Oh! <laughs> He's a jumper. <laughs> oh, he let loose. <laughs> but we saw him. We saw him, so that counts. That was cool. Oh, that wind feels so nice. It does. It feels so nice. It's a gentle breeze blowing right at me. Which, if you didn't know, uh, in Texas, if you're fishing a body of water that is entirely in the state park or on the edge of the state park and you're in the land, you're on the land but you're fishing the bank, you know, uh, you don't need a fishing license. Which... Think about that for a second. Let's say you got some relatives live up north somewhere, way up north like Memphis. Uh, <laughs> Out-of-staters, you can come to Texas, go to a state park and fish to your heart's content. It is a heck of a deal. Don't You do not need a fishing license if you're in the state park. Your pass, if you pay to get in for the day, that pass is what gives you permission to fish. Ooh, ooh. Oh, he's on there. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see him pick it up. I'm looking right at it. I should have seen him. Oh, hey, quick release. Perfect. 
This is going to be the perfect choice. This is a test of fly. My latest version of a frog fly and arguably the best. The proportions are just right even on a number size six hook. Long shank, uh, well not real long, it's a streamer hook. Size six, barbless. Uh, very strong hooks, they don't bend. If anything, they'll break. Oh, you see that? Oh, lordy, that was fun. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good bass. Get out of there. Get, 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 get out of there. Don't you get in that weed, man. I don't want to bring in a bunch of weeds. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, man, that's big enough. I can't pick him up with the rod. Come here, fish. Come here. Oh, yeah, baby. That's a skinny fish. Come on now, fishing pole. Oh yeah, there you go. And he loved a froggy fly. Mm -hmm. Fishy, fishy. Barbless hook pops right out. Goodbye. I bet I do that a couple more times before the evening's over. And hopefully, one of these fish will be gigantic. And uh, I need to be able to keep it out of the weeds because underneath that duckweed is what looks like coontail maybe limbia or maybe hydrilla i don't know what it is i think it's coontail and a load of that stuff will stop that fly in its tracks the important part in all of this is to keep as much of that slack out of your line so you just pull it in a little bit until it moves lay that rod tip on the water so there's no slack there's no belly in that line I'm, I'm in direct contact with it and the best thing to do is to strip set so if you're if you're keeping it moving just slowly like that and you're and you're, you can see how the line will kind of curl towards you that little bit of slack can cause problems but still it's it's way faster to set a hook when you strip set because you don't have the pole, the flimsy pole in between you and the fish. Uh oh, I think I picked up some trash. This thick cover along the edge is actually making a real good hiding place for the fish. They get right up underneath that stuff. It's a ledge. It's a perfectly good ledge. Oh, look at all that movement up there. All right. Let me get let me get a long cast going so I can get it up in that corner. Boom, there we go. <laughs> it's gonna be a hoot if I catch a big one way out there. I <laughs> got something messing with it. Yeah, let's make them chase it. Yeah, there's one underneath it, sitting there looking at it. Took too long, too slow, buddy. Too slow. If I can get him. Oh, I got him. No, I didn't. I wasn't watching. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, I didn't keep it up off the ground. Now I've caught it behind me. What a mess. It's most of the challenge right here is figuring out what to do with to the fly, whether to move it or don't move it. I think both options are good. It's just one of them will be better than the other. I mean, I don't think you get better conditions than this. A little bit of breeze blowing, it stops and gets smooth. These fish seem to be willing. We're coming up on a full moon. Maybe not tonight, but the next night, or maybe Saturday. We got the roundup this Saturday. I'll be working Friday out at the Milliken Reserve to get things ready. You ought to come on out, man. It's going to be a blast. All about fly fishing. We have a ton of master caster instructors, instructors, fly, fly fishing federation, international fly fishing fishermen federation uh, casting instructors. You can come out and learn how to cast a fly rod, and then you can fish the big lake, enter the contest, and see who catches the biggest fish. Boom, chuck a luck 
Come on, fish. I saw way too much movement in there for there not to be a fish in here. Boom. I'll wake them up. Let's see what happens if we do a slap cast where you go boom. Uh oh. Well, that was a short lived flash cast. I caught it on the back end. Big old blue heron just flew in there. Isn't that a pretty sight? A little bit of color in the tree over there, but it's not the typical fall colors. I think it, it looks like a uh, cedar tree that's died. <laughs> yes, what have I got? A little bass? A little teeny tiny bass? No, yeah, I think so. What is it? Yeah, it's just a little bitty teeny tiny bass. I saw him coming. You wouldn't believe how much water that little fish moved. I saw him come and get it. I saw something messing around right there. I think it'll come out and get my frog. This does look nice, doesn't it? Early fall, like the third day of fall. I read someplace where they got alligators in here. Well, look at the overlook. As you can tell, the lake's not full. Well, it's not running over. Mm, smells fishy down here. Shame you can't walk on that. Lots of surface activity. And of course, there's gar in here like nobody's business. And they got all the usual, you know, big gizzard shad and shad in general. There's something big working that area right there along the dam. Carp, gar. Don't see anything right up here close. Let's go over here where the spring comes out of the out of the lake here and goes down and drops into the river here. It looks messy, doesn't it? Need to get a belly boat. That's what I need to start using a belly boat. An inner tube that's made to fish in. I got two of them, or access to two of them. I need to start using that on the Brazos River. Watch your step. Went straight down. Well, that doesn't, doesn't look as inviting as that, and that doesn't look really inviting too much either. Here's the trail that leads to the little falls here. Water. Take only pictures and memories. Leave only footprints. Okay, I think I can do that. Yep, here's where it is. Look at this. There's water coming out of here. Hear it running? Watch your step. This is Texas, which means you're probably going to see a snake or two. Which makes wearing this kind of boots a lot of sense. They're going to strike you at the ankle. Well, they're not going to get through the boots. That's not a lot of water coming out, but it's still coming out. And that is some fresh spring water. All right. I'm going to get right down there and start dropping some flies in here. I've stood over there and cast all the way back over here. <laughs> Wade into that island. That doesn't look like such a good idea at the moment. Those are probably shad moving in the water there. It's a school of something. Let's see what happens. I'll get down here and start fishing. See what might be biting. Water's a lot richer down here. It's got a lot more nutrient load in it. Yeah, I'm gonna find out how strong my line is. I've hung a root way over there. I think I set the hook on it too. Yeah. Lost the whole rig. Dang it. All right, let's head back up to the lake. I got more froggies, so that's not a big deal. 
I just don't have one exactly like that one. That's my latest design. It's got all the improvements in it. That's all right. I know how to make more, which I intend to do because that is a very good design. Very good repeatable pattern. Yeah, what time is it? Six o'clock maybe? You know what? I think I think I've done well enough and I can just take it to the house, get home at a decent hour. There's the truck. It's just a short walk. It's nice when you don't just sweat your tail off. Come back exhausted because you sweat everything in you out. This is a wonderful little park. It's actually not that little. It's big. It goes way up the river. We'll go drive through. We might as well. We got time. Right on out of here and right back to the house. Stopping by the grocery store to pick up some butter and some bread and some milk. Oh, there's a little deer. Oh, they're thin. See that deer's ribs. Get out to the highway, turn right on State Highway 14 and there I got a few options but I think I'll just follow my Siri directions even though I know how to get home from here we'll see what route she takes me she knows she knows I like to take alternate routes I like to make her recalculate she keeps telling me make a u-turn two miles turn left onto West Chico Street <laughs> yay <laughs> ye wall hey Siri that's yay wall not yegua <laughs> Springfield Bait House. This is Springfield, Texas. That's Springfield Lake right back in there. That's the one I was fishing. All right, y'all stay tuned. Well, hell, don't stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Be good, and we'll see you later. Bye.